This is The Well Woman Show. I'm Giovanna Rossi. Today on the show, I'll be talking to Emily Bennett, owner of Baby Blastoff, about how to get what you need by asking for it. Welcome to The Well Woman Show, where we interview women executives, leaders, and entrepreneurs. And you're listening to The Well Woman Show, where motivated women achieve fulfillment and well-being. You're listening to The Well Woman Show. Take time for myself by coming to things like Well Woman Drinks. To be accepting of myself no matter what. Step away from judgment as much as possible. You're listening to The Well Women Show. Just, you're going to be in for a good ride. I don't regret anything. Everything I've ever done, I've learned from it, one way or another, good or bad. Being a little bit selfish for yourself, you know, put your own oxygen mask on first and then give what's left. I'm a woman. I would prefer to, to tell my own story. My story, though it's very personal, is universal. You're listening to The Well Woman Show. And now your host, Giovanna Rossi. Hi, Giovanna Rossi here, and welcome to another episode of The Well Woman Show, where I interview women leaders, executives, and entrepreneurs about their lives and their road to becoming and being who they are today. Are you feeling burned out or finding it hard to focus on your goals, or are you in transition? Well, you're not alone. We all need to activate our superpowers. These are the internal strengths and abilities we all already have, but don't use all the time. Superpowers can be cultivated, and they include empathy, love, intuition, courage, and more. Toward the end of the show, in a segment called Superpowers for Success, I ask my guest about her superpowers, and the answers will give you the strength, perspective, and power to live a well-woman life. I'm so happy you're here, so thanks for tuning in. Today's topic is how to get what you need by asking for it. And hopefully, by the end of the show, you'll be inspired to re-examine the messages we send to our children how you can encourage gender equality at a young age, and learn to find the words to ask for what you need to have better work-life balance. My guest today is Emily Bennett. She's the founder and owner of Baby Blastoff, a children's clothing line aiming to transcend the gender stereotype messages found in most children's clothing. Her clothing is USA-made, unisex, printed from Emily's original artwork, and made from high-quality fabric. Emily sources all materials from local reputable businesses and sustainably manufactures all products in Albuquerque, New Mexico, supporting her community economically. Emily has her master's in education, and prior to starting Baby Blast Off, she taught kindergarten, first and second grade for five years. In this episode, Emily and I talk about the challenges of being a solopreneur, how to create a schedule that allows you to nurture your business and your family or personal life and why it's so important to encourage gender equality at a young age. The free giveaway today is Emily's free, if not boys don't cry, then what? I love the giveaway because it gives straightforward examples of how you can encourage little boys to be more in touch with their emotions and easily move away from gender stereotypes. Head over to wellwomanlife.com slash 073 show to grab your freebie. Before we begin, I want to let you know that I'll be in the UK this summer with events in Oxford and London, and that's in July, and I'm uh, going to be doing a soiree with my sis in Oxford, and that's um, July 19th, and also a fabulous collaboration with my new pal Lucy in London, and her gig is called The Goddess Formula, and we're going to be doing a Well Woman Drinks event on July 17th. So if you're in that area, definitely check out wellwomanlife.com slash events for more information. And this year's superpower retreat will be October 26th and 27th in New Mexico. So save the date and check out the website for more info. I'll be in LA in August at Podcast Movement, presenting on the virtual ticket on how to rock your remote events. So go to podcastmovement.com for more info on that. You can also join the conversation in the Well Woman Life community group at wellwomanlife.com slash Facebook. Now, before I bring on my guest, as always, this episode is brought to you by Well Woman Life, a global community of women living our best lives. Whether it's your health, relationships, your money, or making an impact in your community and the world, Well Woman Life has you covered. You've made a commitment to not settle, to use your voice, and to live your best life. 
Well Woman Life offers annual memberships, workshops, and retreats to support you. Check out wellwomanlife.com slash Facebook to join our growing community. Now back to the show. I'm speaking with Emily Bennett today. Welcome to the program. Hi, thanks for having me. Emily, I want to get started with you explaining to listeners, what are you working on and how does it impact women's lives and well-being? Um, My business is called Baby Blast Off, and it's a line of baby clothing that is about breaking down gender stereotypes and providing an alternative to the traditional pink and blue that you see everywhere. And I started this business after my son was born because I didn't like the gender stereotype messaging that that is so common on children's clothing. And um, so, you know, onesies that say things like lock up your daughters or uh, tough guy or um, little guy, big attitude. And I just didn't feel very comfortable putting those on my son. And so I wanted to create an alternative that would be empowering to him and to other children um, to feel comfortable pursuing their own authentic selves and um, to grow into whoever they want to be and and to help them break down gender stereotype roles. Yeah. Uh, and I see this as really being supportive of, of both children and and women because um, I think that if you know if we're going to change the world to make it a more equal place, really we have to start with our children and teaching them about how we can act differently and think about the world differently. Um, and I see clothing as a form of expression and a form of media. And as an artist, this was a perfect way for me to express my interest in that area and 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 hope to help make the world a better place. Yeah, so that's awesome. I, I want to ask you a few follow ups based on what you've just said. And um, the first thing is that um, it's so interesting to me that there is a lot of you know, a lot more focus now, which is great on um, sort of middle school and high school girls and trying to get them interested in math and science. And um, I I fully support those programs. But it's so interesting to me that that we don't, you know, follow the thread all the way back to the beginning, (laughs) which is all of the messages um, that they're receiving from you know, from baby and toddlerhood, which is, you know, exactly what you were just talking about. Yeah, it's amazing to me. I just, when I I look at onesies, I just can't believe the messages that we put on babies and uh, seemingly without thinking very much about that and wondering about how that impacts um, their lives and how people treat them, even as tiny babies. Yeah. No, it's so true. I mean, we just are, um, I think we are just, society has trained us to even, uh, to accept those things, but also to speak to our little girls and little boys differently. I hear that uh, a lot. I hear, oh, you're so cute to the little girls and, oh, look how fast you are. And and um, that was so clever to the little boys. And so it's really about becoming much more aware of, of that at an earlier age. Yeah. And I, I mean, I've seen a shift um, for girls a lot. Um, people are talking about how to talk to girls and um, how to encourage them in a way that is empowering. And what I think is really interesting is that we're seeing that less for boys. And I I think people are less comfortable in looking at how we treat boys and um, less comfortable in letting them wear pink and um, letting them, you know, have a wider variety of themes in the the clothing they wear. Um, So that is a huge part of my mission is, is to create things for boys that are, that move away from, those stereotype messages that are that are so strong and so deeply rooted. Yes. So what are some of the messages you would rather little boys hear? I would rather have them hear that they can be kind, that they can be gentle. Um, I Some of the drawings that I do, one of my most successful, I think, is of the bunny. Um, because a lot of boys' clothing has, you know, 
animals with, you know, fangs and sharp, you know, claws. Yeah. And they're going, rawr. Um, and, you know, I, I want boys to, to have the message that they can be gentle and they could, they could hold a soft bunny in their arms and, and gently take care of it. And that that, that is part of a being a boy too. Yeah. No, I love it. Um, so we'll definitely link to your, uh, some of your images because it's, it, um, you know, we can't see them on the, on the podcast, but I d- will definitely link to those in the, in the show notes. But do you want to describe any of the other um, imagery or words that you include on your clothing? Sure. I mean, some of my best sellers are the ones for girls, like um, the, the T-Rex, which I call She-Rex, um, which is on pink. And right now it's printed in sparkly green. Uh, people love that. And I think people are really on board with the girl, you know, the girl messages. I've done um, everything from like a chemistry flask for girls and, you know, lawnmower, um, a shark. And on the boys' side, it's a little bit trickier. So I'm another one that I feel like is really successful is the toaster. Um, because, you know, we want to encourage our boys to be active in our households and be cooking. And, um, so the toaster has a big star on it and it's called all-star toaster. Um, and it, it plays with the idea, but it, it, I think people are more comfortable with it because it doesn't, it doesn't go too far. Um, and so that's, that's a place where I, I'm working to play around with that and push a little bit, push push us all a little bit into our discomfort, but not too far yeah. um, so that it's the message is lost. Right. So Emily, your business is a few years old. You've had incredible success so far. Um, can you talk about the journey and um, well, first of all, summarize sort of what, where you are in your business. Like are you're in Nash, you're nationally um, distributing, right? Um, and can you talk a little bit more about that? Sure. I started um, just screen printing in my converted garage and um, selling things to my friends. And then it's, it, you know, there have been lots of twists and turns. I I started manufacturing in 2014 um, and I thought I was going to do a whole line of different styles. Um, but that kind of what really took off were the onesies. That's what gained the most traction. So now I'm, I can come back to just making a wide variety of onesies and then I'm going to add in kids' t-shirts. And I did a Kickstarter so I could go to a trade show in New York um, and that was successful. And um, I, more than anything, that helped me to meet people and network and find out kind of what my next step should be. And now I work with um, two sales reps one out of San Francisco and one in Denver, and um, they help distribute my products um, into stores. And when you say you work with two sales reps, what exactly do you mean? Do you contract with with them, or are they on staff? Like, how does that work? I contract with them. They they go to shows and they have a network of stores that they are connected with, and they present my products to them and um, help get sales that way. Okay, and where did you meet them? Oh, my first ones, I just cold called them. I was, because I knew I wanted to find reps to help me sell. So I just was searching, searching, searching um, for people and calling, cold calling and getting lots of no response and no. And um, I met these folks or I called these folks in San Francisco and they, they said, yes. (laughs) <laughs> That's great. You know, I think it's so important to share these nuts and bolts of how these partnerships and contracts actually happen because women out there listening who are just like you and me, you know, entrepreneurs or or they're in a career and they want to and they're working on a, a side business uh, or they're thinking about a project. Um it's, it's really great to hear from folks who have done it or are doing it and, and exactly how these steps are taken. It's, it's so useful. Yeah, it's, it's not straightforward. I would want people to know that it's, it's so much trying this and, and seeing and, you know, lots of cold calling and lots of disappointing moments and, and 
oh, it's a big challenge to keep going through those times when you feel like, oh, nothing is coming through. Right. And so, um, so I interrupted you. So you got a couple sales reps and then do you want to continue? Oh, from there they've been selling and, um, it's, it's slowly growing. It's, it hasn't been a huge, like, uh, kind of thing, but I feel like I'm working on it, honing the message and, um, it's continuing to grow. And, and that's why I'm saying there's lots of potential, but it's certainly not, you know, quote there yet. <laughs> right. Means. Yeah. It's a constant journey, right? So what, which, are you in actual stores? Like, do you have shelf space? Like how, how are you selling your stuff? Yeah, I sell wholesale to stores, boutiques, um, for example, in, in Seattle, um, you know, you could go to the store and see my onesies on their, you know, hangers in that store, um, in places in San Francisco and LA. Um, I also sell online and I sell uh, locally in Albuquerque at the farmer's market. Um, which is also fabulous. Oh, great. Um, okay. And so, yeah, you were, you were talking just a minute ago about the process and um, just how important it is to stick with the journey. And even when it's feeling like nothing is happening, you're hitting a wall. What is it that helps you keep going in those moments? It helps me to keep going to find to find something to do, some reason to hope, I guess. <laughs> so take it, taking I'm, action. Yeah, if I'm if I'm stuck or something isn't working, I try to go back to okay, what you know, what steps can I take today? What can I do to feel productive today um, to help move myself forward? Um, and sometimes it really helps me to connect with my mentors um, and other business friends and just say, hey, I'm really in this rut and um, just to have some personal connection because I work alone a lot. Um, and that, I think that can be a real struggle for, for solopreneurs. Yeah. Um, so I also remember to reach out to people who help you and say, help me. I'm struggling. Right. <laughs> what, you know, what should I do next? Or just let's have coffee. But you know, in order to do that, that that requires some vulnerability, right? Some some sort of letting your guard down and saying, I I need help. This isn't going well. And I, I think that's hard for women who are wanting to show that they are successful and wanting to be successful. So has that been a challenge? Absolutely. You know, you have to open yourself up and, and be raw and, you know, let people say what they're going to say. It's, it's a huge risk and the payoff to letting people in, I think is it's tremendous and, and worth well worth it. Yeah, definitely. Well, Emily, can you describe a time in your own life when you weren't putting yourself first um, maybe you weren't taking care of yourself the way you probably now know you need to in order to do all of this. You're a mom, you're an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk about that? Sure. I, you know, I, I juggle a lot of things as we do as women and moms and getting my kids signed up for classes and making, them up and making lunches and all the things that we do. And so it's hard. It's really hard sometimes to carve out time just to work on my business. And um, at the beginning of this year, I was feeling that feeling in my gut, that sort of resentful feeling like, oh, I just don't have enough time to do what I want to do. Um, and it was, it took some courage for me to talk with my family and say, you know, I really want, I, I need more time. And so we worked out for my daughter to actually go to preschool more. And, um, she started doing that and that opened up for me a lot of space and that feeling of resentment kind of melted away. And, um, so it's, it's, it was really scary to kind of admit that that was going on with me. But once I did, it, it really helped me to, to loosen and to, you know, to get what I needed and take care of myself. 
Yeah. And I know that I know that kind of conversation because I've had it. Um, (laughs) uh, It it, it is hard because on the one hand, you know, you want to be a 100 plus percent for your kids. And there's always that question of, is this right for my kids? Is this, you know, is this what we need to be doing? And on the other hand, it's, um, you know, if we don't do this, I, I can't pursue my business or I, you know, I can't go to the next level or whatever it is. So was that a difficult transition? Yeah, I think it's, I mean, I struggle with it all the time. What, what is best for my kids? What, you know, could I be doing more? I think as women, we have a lot of pressure from society and and we put on ourselves too, to be, you know, super mom and be super entrepreneur and, you know, do all the things and exercise every single day, you know, um, it just, it's, I don't have any answers. It's it's a constant struggle. (laughs) Yeah. You know, I wanted to ask you also, um, you talk about gender stereotypes with children, uh, of course, that you're addressing in your business with your clothing line. Do you, have you um, experienced gender stereotypes in business and how, how has that been and how have you overcome that? Yeah, as a, as a woman business person, I, I just feel more comfortable when I'm working with other women. And I, I, I do my best to surround myself with other women entrepreneurs because, because other women get it. They get what you're going through as a mom. And, um, you know, there recently there was on the news that that gentleman who was interviewed, um, for the BBC or something. And then like his kids came in, in the background yeah. Skype thing, like that is my life. <laughs> I know. <laughs> When they hear your kid go, Mom, I did a snack, you know, they, it feels less like a, like a bad thing. It feels like they get it. Um, and so I don't know. I don't think I've sort of figured out how to manage that except for trying to associate myself with women and, uh, and people who support, you know, what I'm doing and understand that you've all got lots of things going on. Yeah. Now it's time for our segment called Superpowers for Success. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. Being a well woman includes being financially healthy. Our sponsors, Lorraine L. and Kate Stalter of Better Money Decisions, are on a mission to eliminate complexity and confusion from your financial life. They replace Wall Street jargon with straightforward talk you can understand. And they create investment and retirement plans customized for your needs and your future. Download a free copy of their latest book, Don't Let Your Money Kick the Bucket Before You Do, and learn how to avoid the biggest mistakes women make when planning for retirement. Go to bettermoneydecisions.com slash wellwoman and download your free book today. I want to ask you a few quick questions. The first one is, what does success in life mean to you? Successful life to me looks like having a giant web of community and you know from your family close to you to friends and having all of these connections that enrich your life I think you know success I think successful life would look like you know wherever you go like if you're in the airport in London you run into somebody you know and have a chance to connect with them or you walk down the street by your house and you see a neighbor and you get the chance to connect with them. I think, I think that's, that is success. Mm. And, um, another part though, I think of a successful life is, is having something to work on that is really meaningful. Um, is really purposeful work is what I wanted to say. Um, when you have a chance to engage in purposeful work, I feel like that is happiness. Did you have to make a decision at some point when you started your business that you could only do purposeful work? Because clearly your business is purposeful. Um, Did you have to give something else up in order to do to pursue this? Well, having 
you know, a stable income. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and that, that could be a big thing. Um, I had to give up that and I had to give up a sense of sort of like safeness, I think. Uh, our families and um, friends, I think, often want us to be safe. You know, they want us to pursue a life that leads to, you know, us being taken care of, which is out of love. Um, and having to challenge that is is like letting something go, like um, saying to the people you love, you know, I'm I'm stepping into the space of sort of less safeness and can we still all be okay with that? Right. Well, and just to dig into that a little deeper, how risky was it? Because there's, there's, you know, there's risk and stepping into a less safe place. And then there's true risk where you literally, you know, may like lose your home or something. So like, where were you on the spectrum? I I mean, it's not super risky for me personally. Um, But I think, you know, for for other people, you know, for instance, parents, you know, want you to save for retirement, things yeah. like that. Right. Yeah, understood. Um, I think a lot of that is mindset, you know, sort mm-hmm. of thinking, you, you can think your way into a really scary place, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Or you can think your way out of it too and say, you know, here here are the facts of the situation. We're going to be okay. Yeah, we might might not save as much for retirement in the next couple of years while I build my business, but that's okay. And and so defining sort of what's okay and what feels safe for you, I think is a key part of it. Yeah, so important. Well, Emily, the next question is what, um, sorry, when did you know you were really good at what you do? You know, recently somebody said to me, it's such a pleasure to work with you. And I think that felt like a moment when I felt like, oh, I'm good at this. You know, this person feels really comfortable working with me. Um, and, and we've established a great relationship, working relationship. So um, this is so interesting because I ask this question to everybody I interview and a lot of people's answers revolve around um, external, uh, something external. So like someone telling them, you know, something, Mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, uh, expected in a lot of ways that that's how we operate as, as people Mm -hmm. and, and as women. Um, we definitely rely on those external validations for who we are and how valuable we are and whether we're good at something. Um, but was there ever a time when internally you thought, I've, I've just really got this. I just know in my gut, in my heart that, that I'm good at this and I, I'm going to do this. Hmm. I don't know. I I, I think it's something I struggle with every day. Yeah. <laughs> Don't we all? Um, I think I have, I have moments of feeling that way because um, it's still, you know, still really in the thick of the journey. Um, I have moments when I, you know, I'm working on a new drawing and it comes together and it looks awesome, you know, according to me. And and I feel like, wow, I, you know, I am awesome. I just made an awesome drawing and I'm all by myself in this room and nobody said anything. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Okay. And then um, what superpower did you discover you had only to realize it was there all the time? My drawing, speaking of. Yeah. Um, I think I... I, as a small child, I always loved to draw, and I told my parents I wanted to be a cartoonist when I grew up. And um, I kind of went another direction for a while, and you know, thought I wasn't going to do this. And recently, I've you know had more of those moments, like I just described, being like, "Wow, I'm good at this." Um, it feels like, yeah, 
I am an artist and I have been my entire life. Cool. Okay. And then can you describe a personal habit that contributes to your well-being? Sure. Uh, well, I go to bed every night at nine. <laughs> I think that helps me. I I try to do, as soon as my kids are in bed, I try to start my own routine for going to sleep. I'm, I'm not a night person and sleep is so important to my own well-being. Um, so I really try to be in bed as soon as possible so that I can um, get enough shut eye for myself. And so does that um, also mean that you wake up early? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get up with my kid yeah. to get them ready, but I'm not up at the crack of dawn either. Um, no, I, I need a good solid, I don't know, eight, nine hours of sleep. Um, to be at my best. Yeah. So. Okay. And um, Emily, what advice would you give your younger self, say 10 or 15 years ago? I wish that I, I, I would tell myself to relax, I think. I, should, I would tell myself that now too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that you know, when you're young, when I was young, younger, I felt a lot of pressure to um, have a job that provided insurance and all the things, you know, to really be set, quote unquote. And um, you know, I look back on that time and I think I was so free in some ways. You know, I wasn't married. I didn't have kids yet. I, I mean, I could have spent so much time working on artwork. Um, but I, at that time I wasn't feeling that way because I was feeling really anxious about being settled and, and, and being okay in that way. And so I would, I think I would tell myself to just, you know, relax. You're going to be okay. And you have so much time now to spend exploring things. Um, explore, go explore. Mm. That's great advice. Um, and then do you identify as a feminist, Emily? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> do you want to say anything else? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, from my choice of business, I think it's pretty clear. That, yeah. Um, yeah. Why is it so important to you? that we have, um, that, that feminism is strong. I think we, we would all benefit, um, from a world that is more equal, not just women, but men too. And, um, I think that, I, I just, I don't think that going the other direction is going to um, create more peace or caring in the world. Yeah. And I just want to pick up on, you know, the conversation earlier we had about your clothing line and specifically the messages for boys. Um, if we look at that, you know, in the adult life, in the adult world, um, it, it's clear that men, you know, there, there are male feminists, obviously we, we have a lot of them. Um, mm -hmm. but, but a lot of men do not consider themselves feminists. And, um, what would you say about that in, in terms of what you're trying to do with small children and how that translates to the adult world? I think that it's hard to change adult minds. Um, I think that starting with children is is how we change the world and teaching our young sons um, about about equality and about privilege and about um, caring and kindness and allowing space for them to feel their feelings and and support them in doing that and giving them words for talking about their feelings. These are all things we can do 
right now for our, our young sons that I think will translate into, you know, grown men who may think about the world differently. Yeah. Okay, Emily, last question. What are you reading right now? What's on your nightstand? You know, I just finished um, reading uh, True Diary of a Part-Time Indian by Sherman Alexi, mm-hmm. and um, it was for my book group. Um, such a fabulous, interesting, devastating book. Um, are you familiar with Sherman Alexi? Yes. Yeah, but I haven't read that book. I would really recommend it. It's It will make you cry and it will make you laugh. It's about a Native teen. Uh, living on a Spokane reservation, and it's it's partly autobiographical, um, not entirely for Sherman Alexi. And then he, this teen, chooses to go to school off the reservation, and um, it you know discusses all of the challenges that come with that. And um, but it's just so funny. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty funny. Um, okay, well, we'll definitely link to that in the show notes for people who want to follow up and read what you're reading. And Emily, it's been such a pleasure speaking with you today. Thank you. That's it for our show today. Remember, if you need support to live your Well Woman life, head over to wellwomanlife.com slash Facebook to join us. Our monthly live event, Well Woman Drinks, brings women together to share our successes and challenges as women, leaders, moms, aunts, sisters, and all the other roles we carry. If you'd like to attend a Well Woman Drinks near you, or if there isn't one in your city yet and you'd like to start one, email info at wellwomanlife.com. If you enjoyed the show, please take a moment and subscribe in iTunes and leave a review. This helps raise visibility, which is super helpful when it comes to producing the show every week. For feedback, comments, or just to let me know you were listening today, find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Well Woman Life. I'm Giovanna Rossi for The Well Woman Show. Until next time, have a super powerful week. <laughs>